Okay, so do this lecture 12 on bio microelectromechanical systems. We were talking about the last lecture, we tried to cover the following topics uh, application of biosensors in the diagnostics industry, particularly for uh, metabolites of interest like uh, urea, creatine, oxalate, glucose, adenosine, so on and so forth. There are different uh, gas based sensors which are used for uh, taking blood sample and doing quick analysis of uh, one or more of these metabolites in uh, the, uh, the patient's blood sample. And uh, essentially, uh, we also tried to investigate a uh, little details about how the double layer uh, between two phases of uh, solids so or solid and a liquid or liquid and a liquid formulates and how there is a charge separation uh, which would lead to uh, a distribution of uh, uh, one phase uh, as a counter ion charges. Uh, in uh, as, as bulk charge or diffuse layer uh, within the within uh, one of the phases, one of the interacting phases. So now uh, we would look into, and so we actually try to find out also the the potential in a one-dimensional model uh, of an electrode in contact with a solution, and try to estimate uh, the value of the potential um, from uh, by solving um, the one-dimensional equivalent of the Poisson's equation electric field okay, for, for potential. So essentially we got the density factor, the charge density, volume charge density rho equated to minus A D square of K e to the power of minus K x by 4 pi, right. D is the dielectric constant, I am sorry, K again is um, a constant which was put uh, as an equivalent of the total amount of charges e to the power minus k x, x is the direction in which uh, the potential has to be evaluated. Let me just write this a little more clearly here, uh, make it uh, x, okay. And a of course is the constant uh, in the solution of the potential equation with respect to x. So if you uh, really look at the surface charge density and uh, we also try to discuss this that you know in the electrode a very critical uh, parameter of importance is what is the charge density on the surface of the electrode. When we are talking about microflows, microfluidic channels, uh, the charge density essentially means the density of the dangling bonds which are there on the surface. If you have a silicon surface and you salinize it and get uh, it converted into SiOH and uh, then under a certain pH this converts into SiO minus the you know the, the charge density on the surface of such a, such a situation would essentially be a function of the bond density on the surface too. Okay. So, now if you look at um, uh, or if you assume sigma to be the surface charge density of an electrode, okay. so the relationship between sigma and rho would really be sigma is integral minus of course rho times of dx okay, where uh, x varies between a and infinity. One thing which uh, I would like to illustrate here is how this equation is coming out is uh, from the fact that if you look into the principle of electrical neutrality, the charge which is there on the surface uh, of the electrode is uh, should be equivalent to the total amount of charge and the volume of the solution uh, which forms an interface with this particular surface. Okay. So, uh, with that logic the surface density, density should be the negative of uh, the volume charge density of the solution and integral of that with respect to the distance x from the electrode. And uh, if you may recall the outer Helmholtz layer is at a distance uh, equal to uh, let us say some value A which is the ion size parameter also we can consider that to be what uh, you know is the beginning of this uh, let us say this uh, so called solvated ion shell. And then beyond that uh, the potential extends all the way up to infinity and so there is always a density uh, of charge mathematically possible up to infinity. So the charge density goes down of course uh, with the increase in x but it is never almost 0. It goes to a certain finite amount which is close to 0. Okay. So with that logic we can say that uh, sigma is minus rho dx integral uh, where x varies from a to infinity. So if you put the value of rho here from equation 2 and try to solve this equation uh, we are left with sigma equal to a d times uh, divided by 4 pi integral e to the power of minus k 
k x t x integral varying between a and infinity. I just want to recall that I would like to recall that a is the ion size parameter. So, if you really have an electrode with a negative ion say here and uh, there is a plane here which contains all these different positive charges on the outer Helmholtz planes okay. And as it goes down the density slowly reduces into the bulk volume and this distance is x. So, the x really starts from where the solvated ion shell which is somewhere here starts which can be equivalent to the ion size parameter here a. So, from a to all the way to about infinity uh, we can find out what is the charge density by looking at really the rho the volume charge density and maintaining what you call the principle of electron neutrality okay. So, these are all positive charges and these are all the solvated ion solvated shell of thin water molecules. By the by this layer is only about of tens of nanometers okay. So, it is extremely small uh, tens of nanometers give me a minute here about 10 nanometers. So, if we solve this integral here you are left with a d k square by 4 pi integral a to infinity e to the power minus k x pi k of course, with the minus sign and uh, now this would eventually convert into a d k square by 4 pi times of e to the power of minus k a by k. Or in other words finally, converting into a d k by 4 pi e to the power of minus k a ok. That is what this is and from that we can estimate by looking at the surface tangency sigma the value of a and the coefficient in the solution of the Poisson's equation. So, a here would be represented as 4 pi sigma divided by d k and e to the power of k a ok. That is how a can be represented and uh, essentially the potential function x which is also a e to the power of minus q x becomes 4 pi sigma by d k d again is the dielectric constant of the medium in which uh, the solution is present. So, the solution normally is in an aqueous medium and so the medium is water and dielectric constant uh, would be the dielectric constant of water in CGS units. So, 4 pi sigma by d k e to the power of k a minus x ok. That is what the potential function phi x would be. Interestingly it would be almost uh, uh, a very good thing to assume what the potential would be just close to the surface ok. Just close to the surface means where uh, the ion size parameter for the negative ion uh, ends almost ok. So, it is very close to the electrode surface where the solvated ion or solvated shell of these thin water molecules tens of nanometers they just just about start and uh, uh, there is where the a actually ends right the ion size parameter ends. So, at that particular parameter uh, the potential that is available really is nothing but the surface potential of the particular surface ok in question. And so, therefore, uh, if we put x equal to a in this particular equation for the potential equation 3 we should be able to get that as an estimate. So, let us look at what the potential function would be at x equal to a. So, it should be equal to 4 pi sigma by d k e to the power of 0 ok or 4 pi sigma by d k ok. So, this is also the surface potential close to where the solvation cell just about starts. So, this is the surface of interest and this is the solvation shell of water molecules. Uh, we start in this particular region and this is let us say the positive charges in the solution and there is a reduced order of these charges as it moves more into the bulk and uh, essentially goes all the way up to 0. And so, the electrode here is negatively charged and the ion size parameter can be somewhere very close to the surface let us say it is A. So, between a and 
x equal to infinity there is a charge distribution but at A the potential really is the surface potential. So this concept should be very very clear in mind because this uh, we need to use or we will be using very often for determining what you call electrokinetic flows in some of the next modules all right. So what we call this zeta potential or zeta of phi at 0. So we call this the zeta potential of a surface. There are ways and means now of measuring the zeta potential of a surface of interest okay. Uh, initially for uh, any solid surface the, uh, the zeta potential uh, would be a very hard parameter to find out but there are meters now available where this uh, measurement can be made. Interestingly also for uh, nanoparticles okay particles uh, whose sizes are less than 100 nanometers the surface potential forms a very interesting you know aspect because it always uh, is a result or it's, it always uh, is uh, leading to the, uh, the, the discretization of these particles and it always prevents aggregation. So a very important aspect in making nanoparticles is how you can change the zeta potential of the surface and you can use variety of surfactants or a variety of materials which kind of coat the surfaces in a manner that uh, you have uh, a certain potential associated with the surface and if you have uniquely similar uh, potentials across all the other nanoparticles which are available they hardly coagulate okay. So just to give you an idea of how important this zeta potential is whether it is a plane surface or the surface of a nanoparticle or any other surface okay uh, zeta potential of an extreme importance. So with this we kind of have a very good idea now how a surface would behave with respect to you know a solution. Uh, I would now go to uh, directly almost into the various electrokinetic phenomena that are available and that can be used for a lot of uh, you know micro flow related situations okay. So what is uh, what are those electrokinetic phenomena okay. So let us uh, look at some of the definitions in order to begin with uh, uh, this new topic and it is very much related to you know the, the earlier topic on zeta potential of a particular surface. So electrokinetic properties are associated with the phases in contact with each other and are of particular significance for microflows okay. So whenever there are two, two or more phases which are in contact with each other there is almost always these properties of charging which comes into picture. So uh, one or more of these interfering or participating surfaces interfacing surfaces uh, develops uh, some kind of a charge okay. So applying an EMF across such an intercept interface uh, causes movements of all the phases with respect to one another okay while force movement of phases produces characteristic EMF okay. So thus the cause and effect are interchangeable and altogether all electrokinetic effects can be summarized uh, as either motions caused by imposed EMF or EMF produced by the movement of phases okay. So in one cause or in one, uh, in one kind of phenomena you impose an EMF or, or put a potential or subject a potential and try to study the flow or the motion to the charges or the charge separation of the double layer which happens okay. In another instance you are basically producing an EMF by forcing a certain interface over another uh, which develops this uh, dual layer charging. So there are uh, four different mechanisms which can be categorized into these two subtypes. One is motion caused by the imposed EMF. Uh, this category involves or it, it includes electrosmosis okay. And uh, definitionally electrosmosis is really principle by which liquid caused to move through a static diaphragm with microcapillaries across the diaphragm occurs okay. So due to electrosmosis uh, it generates uh, some kind of a driving pressure which causes liquid to move automatically through static diaphragm or a set of microcapillaries. So we will investigate this process uh, um, a little bit in details in the following slides. The other phenomena of motion caused by imposed EMF is really a motion of charged particles in a medium okay on subjecting to an uh, electric field. So this is also known as electrophoresis okay. So solid particles caused to move through a stationary liquid when it is subjected to such an external EMF or such an external electric field. The other two phenomena of importance uh, and these four phenomena are really uh, important for sensing and microfluidic applications is basically those which are categorized under the subtype of uh, uh, the case where EMF is produced by forcing uh, 
uh, using pressure driven flows, uh, one fluid or one interface on other surface. So, one such phenomena is called the streaming potential. So, it is a potential produced by liquid being forced through a diaphragm or through a set of micro capillaries in the diaphragm. Okay. So, if you are forcing this liquid um, phase over a solid phase essentially uh, with some kind of a diaphragm which has all these micro capillaries. So, you are forcing them with several micro capillaries.